<lacht> okay. Oh, hey, it's you. I'm out here in the dark again, taking pictures of the Milky Way at a place called Wupaki. It's a national monument, and it's the ruins of some old Pueblos or something like that. But I wanted to show you what I'm doing. I'm here with my camera on a tripod. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is in all its glory, pointed up towards the Milky Way. And I'm taking a picture of this rock, which you probably can't see, but it's a, a cool looking rock. I'm gonna change my light to white. You might not know this, but we use the red lights because the red lights don't affect your night vision as badly as white lights do. But for your benefit, I'll use the white lights so you can see what I'm doing. Check it out. This is what I'm shooting at. So the Milky Way is right above this ruin and I can get the Milky Way in the photo, but this is all black because there's no light shining on it. And I tried shining light on it with my flashlight like I'm doing right now, and that's way, way too much light. So what I found is behind me there is, hold on, we're turning around, there's this rock. It's just a rock. So I'm bouncing the light from my headlamp off this rock so that it's fainter as it hits this and it just illuminates the ruins just a, a little bit so you can see the detail in them um, and the Milky Way and then I'm going to take a bunch of photos like that and stack them all together and it's going to be fucking amazing Bye bye Hello everybody How are you today? It is Saturday morning. It seems to be Saturday's art time morning with Luke, I guess. Uh, we're playing with the iPad today. Today is going to be, uh, we'll do some painting, I guess. I'm not much of a painter. I never really painted before. Actually, the first time I really painted, it was at uh, the Blackstone Valley Art Association. And it was Laura Sinadella that had me come over and draw a little thing on her painting. And afterwards, I drew my little thing, and I was all embarrassed about it. Like, I don't know how to paint, I don't know how to draw. But she was super kind and warm about it. And she was like, no, what you did was great. Look, this painting is so much better now because of the thing you did. And it really wasn't, but she was really nice about it. Anyway, that's how I uh, started painting. So thanks, Laura. Now, we're going to talk about Procreate, which is an app for the iPad. Um, I don't think that it works on Android, so if you have an Android device, then maybe stick around or come back later, and I'll go over some of these same things uh, with Photoshop. So you can use really either program. If you have an iPad, Procreate's fantastic. If you don't, Photoshop might be a cheaper option that you may already have. Um, so that being said, let's swap over into the magical world of my iPad for a moment. Here we go. All right, so here we are on my iPad. It's glorious, isn't it? This is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So it's big, like it's a big slate of paper I'm holding it up right now, bigger than a normal iPad. Um, but that's that's great for drawing and it's great for doing uh, kind of stuff that I do, right? So the first thing you'll obviously need to do with your iPad is install Procreate. So to do that, um, you wanna go to the App Store you could either click on the App Store icon or what I always do on my iPad because it's faster is I just take my finger and drag down to reveal the search bar. And then I just start typing the word app and it comes up first. So that way I don't have to like swipe across my screens and find my programs and stuff. I just swipe down and type what I want. So I go to the App Store and then I'll come down here over in the right corner to search 
and then up in the search bar there, you can type procreate, right? Unfortunately, it looks like you're not seeing my iPad. Ah, here we go. Sorry about that. Now you're seeing my iPad. So let me go back here. Let me show you all that one more time. So this is the home screen of my iPad. When I want to start an application, I swipe my finger down just a little, and it reveals this kind of searchy window. And then I'll type the, the beginning of the app that I want, and it usually comes up first here in this application window. And that saves me the trouble of looking for the icon. Now we're in the Apple uh, App Store, and down here at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen is the little search thing. If you hit search, then you can type up here and search for what you're searching for. And what I'm searching for is Procreate, which I've already typed here. So Procreate is here, the first, uh, the first app here. I'm not going to download it yet, though. You can see there's a little cloud icon with a arrow there. That, that means I've already downloaded this, this before, but I uninstalled it so I could show you some things. Right? So this is mainly for my wife, Jen's benefit. Right? If you're in a household with somebody and you share the same Apple ID, you don't both have to pay for the same program twice. So if you want to install a program that somebody else uh, in your household has paid for already, this is how you do that. So let's cancel this search thingy. Go away. So here we're in the Apple uh, App Store, right? And you'll notice there's a little icon of me looking cool up in the top right hand corner of the screen. If I click on that, it's the whole, you know, your iCloud stuff. But if we look at purchased here, which is the first, well, yeah, the first little option here, there's my purchases, which are apps that I have bought myself. And I can also see the apps that Jen's bought. So that way, we don't have to buy the same app twice. So she could come in here and she'll see my purchases and then she can install Procreate instead of paying another $10. Look at that. Apple tips. So now that you guys know about that, I'm going to install Procreate and let's uh, let's show you what it actually is, right? Let's uh, search. Bam. Procreate. Here we go. Now you'll also notice with the iPad, I'm using the Apple Pencil, which is a fancy Bluetooth stylus. And it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing device. It really does feel like a pen. It's not like any other stylus I've ever used um, where they just feel like a stick that you're hitting a screen with. This, it feels like writing, it feels like drawing. It's pretty, it's pretty freaky, Bowie. So we've got Procreate installed, right? You see that? Now I have the option to open it here on my iPad. So I'm going to hit open. And we will be presented with the wonderful world of Procreate. Check that out. So this is fresh. This is uh, how the app starts. There's some examples of some of the things that you can actually do in Procreate, which are way beyond my level of skill. But I mean, look at stuff that people have made in this app. It's nuts. It's nuts. I'm jealous of these abilities. Like this sort of illustration is just super cool. So here's the Procreate app. This is where you start in the app. It's just a gallery of all the projects that you've been working on, um, pictures you've imported, things like that. There's not much going on here. You could either select a bunch of things. You know, you get these little radio buttons down here. So if I want to delete all these, I could select them all and then hit delete, which I do. I'm going to delete them all because they're not mine, right? I don't want them. And boom, so now there's nothing here. I've got a fresh slate. I could either import a, a file or a photo from my file system, either from Google Drive or Dropbox or just something. I could take a picture with my iPad itself and import that if I wanted to. Or I could uh, import a photo from my camera roll, which is the camera roll that you would have on your phone, probably is synced with iCloud and all that. Or you could just hit new and start a brand new blank document. So that's what this little plus sign is here. So I'm going to hit this little plus sign here. And it gives me the option to start a new canvas with a bunch of different canvas sizes. And what I've been picking, for lack of a better option, is A4. Um, and A4 is just the size of a standard 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, I think, right? So I go with A4. And then I have just a regular sheet of paper here. And you can see that I can use my fingers to interact with it and turn it and move it around, zoom in and out. 
right? It's very, very fluid. It's very fast. There's no lag at all. It's, it's a, the iPad is a fun device to work on because it's so fast. And, um, uh, the way that you interact with it is just, it's different than using a mouse and keyboard. It's, it's fun. It's creative. Um, I like it a lot. So anyway, here's our blank canvas and you'll see we just have a white screen. Now, up in the top here, there's a toolbar that starts with the word gallery there. You see that in the top left? There's, let's just go over what's in here so you know what, what, what's up. There's a general settings here. This is where you set up, you know, your preferences. And also when you're done, where you export and share with your friends and stuff that's on in this menu. There's a menu of adjustments here. These are great for photo editing because Procreate isn't just for painters. It's also for all digital artists. So there's a lot of uh, powerful tools here that you might be familiar with in Photoshop. So, so that's cool. This is mostly stuff I would use for photography, not for painting. And then the next one here, this is a selection tool. So if you were trying to maybe cut somebody out of a background or maybe select somebody's iris and change the color or something like that, you would use this tool to help define that selected area of the image that you want to work on. And then there's a general kind of move tool situation here, right? So those are the tools on the left-hand side of the screen. And then on the right-hand side of the screen are the fun tools, right? So over here, we have the brush. And inside this little brush menu is a, so many cool brushes that it's ridiculous. Like, and they're all categorized in a sane and useful way, which is um, interesting, you know, it's great. So we can look here, we've got some sketching pencils. This would be used for uh, sketching or maybe technical work, blueprints, things like that. You can get a really, really fine tip pencil that never breaks. Um, and if we just, let's just grab one of these pencils and I'll start writing here. Let's change my color to black. Start writing here. This really responds and feels like a pencil. It's, and, and it's also pressure sensitive, so I can, I can go really thinly and it will behave like a pencil would. You see how it's kind of gray instead of black, which is cool. And then if I press harder, it would behave like a pencil would behave, which is cool. So now I put a bunch of scribbles on my canvas just to show you what a brush does. One of the cool things about Pro Procreate and the iPad in general is now to undo anything that I just did, it's just two fingers to tap on the screen. So if I tap with two fingers on the screen, it'll undo my last brush stroke. So I can just tap, tap, and it just goes away. Tap, tap, do, 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 do. And I could just double tap here and back all the way out as, as far as I want to go. Alternatively, there's an eraser, and there's a million different ways. We could have just painted over it with white, whatever. Now we're back to a clean slate. Let's look at some of these other brushes because they're super cool. So sketching is pencils and stuff. There's some pastels, uh, oil in there. That's cool. There's inking. So if you wanted to um, use like a fountain pen or something like that, there's one of those in here. Bunch of different stuff. Markers. Um, I assume that many of these brushes and pen tips are used by different trades for different purposes. And I'm just not familiar with what they are because they all have like very defined names like the H6 pencil. I don't know what that is. Drawing, we have some cool brushes here. Let's see what, I don't even know what this is. See this one that says Evolve? Let's let's just look at it and see what it does, because it's fun. Oh, it's like a, it's like a marker. It's kind of cool. It's a little blotchy. Uh, and then we can get into painting, and this is what I've been playing with in Procreate lately, and it's really fun. Um, primarily in here, I like the oil paint brush. So let's I just show you. We'll go into actually painting stuff in a bit, but I just want to show you what's in here and where everything is. Real quick, I'll just show you what the oil paint brush looks like. Ooh, oop, that's black. I want it to be like this color. Right? It looks like oil paint. And if you add a couple of different colors, they blend and behave and mix in the same way that oil paints would which is very interesting. And also, that's also pressure sensitive. So the more pressure that I put onto the screen with my pen, the more ink is loaded onto whatever brush I have. And, and that's cool. So I'm backing out of here again. All right, so that's the oil paint brushes. Then we have some artistic ones, which are, are just neat kind of 
textures. All right, you could do all sorts of different stuff with this. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Calligraphy is interesting. So I'm, I don't know how to do calligraphy. I don't write or draw well. Um, well, I do write well, but I don't like, I don't have good penmanship. Um, but check this out. So let's grab one of these and I'll just write my name. Look, it helps make all the lines exactly the way they should be. You know, it makes the curves look cool. It makes me a better artist than I am. Um, so those, those are the kind of tools that I like. Those are the best kinds of tools. If, you, if there's a tool out there that makes your job easier and makes you better at what you do, use that tool. Um, so that's cool. So calligraphy is, is great if you want to play with that. I'm sure, I, mean, I think Lisa does calligraphy. Um, so I'd be interested in, in seeing some of the stuff she could come up with there. Then there's airbrushing. I use these a lot. This is um, similar to, uh, like, the. this is kind of the default brush in Photoshop. It's very useful um, because you can really feather in colors and stuff. So I, I use it on photos. So if I'm trying to, like, I want to paint in a little bit of warmth over here or I want to, you know, fix up somebody's skin tone or something like that. I could come in here and very faintly add color that way. Handy airbrushes. Um... Next we have textures, which are very interesting. So these are cool. Now we're getting into just Funko trippy outland. Let's grab this Victorian one because it looks funky and then start painting with that. So now we see it's painting that pattern. I'm gonna make my brush. I'll explain about how to make the brushes bigger and stuff later, but I'll just do it bigger so you can see what it's doing here. It's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know that I can't think of a practical purpose for that, but maybe you can. Here's a grungy one, right? That's just a texture. I would use that all over the place. I, I love that, that kind of blotty, kind of uh, smudgy stuff. Cool, so th these are textures. A grid is probably just a grid, yep. So now I'm painting a grid. So imagine some of the stuff you could do with this. You could paint, not only can you do all these cool things with all these cool brushes, but this is all mixed media in that you can do things that you can't do in the real world. Like imagine that you had an oil painting and then you wanted to draw a pencil sketch on top of it. Because there's no way you'd be able to do that without ruining the, the painting. But in Procreate, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. Let's uh, get rid of the stupid grid. What else we got in here? Abstracts. We get some waves. Right? That's that's wicked cool. I didn't even have to try very hard. Just poking at what's in here. Uh, I haven't pre... Well, I've used some of these. Like this Opticon one does a bunch of bubbles. And that's pretty cool. So I use that in a couple places. Those are neat. Uh, let's keep going. We got some charcoals if you wanted to work with charcoal. And, and those are fun. Um, but see what I mean about the naming? Like 2B compressed or 4B compressed or 6B compressed, I assume that that's relevant information to people that are artists. Um, I don't know, I'm just playing. Oh, let's see what Burnt Tree is, because that sounds cool. Burnt Tree. It's like a charcoal drawing. Let's make it black so it looks more like charcoal. Right? This looks like I'm... Um, remember back in like elementary school when we used to go to the the graveyards and like trace the graves and try and get the imprint. That's what this feels like I'm doing. It's very cool. All right. Moving on. Let's see what we've got for elements here. So these are cool. We can, we can just paint smoke or flames or oceans or stars or whatever you can imagine. You can just, eh, let's, let's just draw some flames. Let's pick a red ish orangey color and then ah, we painted flames that looks terrible but i don't think that looks like flames maybe it looks like a poop explosion oh, i guess it does kind of look like a flame it looks like a candle Ooh. all right don't get distracted luke there's people watching you uh let's play with the water a little bit because water is gonna be in everywhere i'm i'm Figuring out right now, as we're looking through these brushes, what it is we're going to paint when we move on to the next section of whatever this is. So I'm just kind of putting my uh, my brainstorming hat on. 
Now we have spray paints. Spray paints look like spray paint. Which is a cool effect. Or there's some cooler looking ones like splatter, which is, I like splattery, grungy looking stuff a lot. So that's stuff I'll use probably. Then there's touch up stuff. This is if you were working on a photo, if you're doing a photo portrait retouch and maybe you wanted to, you know, give somebody a little more hair than they really had, you get a fine hairbrush to draw in some hair. Um, or uh, noise. There's some texture here for different skin. You could give somebody zombie skin. Maybe we'll do that later. Maybe we'll give somebody zombie skin. That sounds fun. Um, next, we got some vintage stuff here. Interesting. Let's see what uh, flower power looks like. Let's pick a green one. Whoa. Look at that. Cool. Uh, luminance here. We have some flares and some light effects if you wanted to maybe simulate the effect of camera bokeh in an image that didn't have any. Like you could, you could adjust the depth of field with this after the fact, and that's kind of interesting. Industrial. These are textures, um, twisted tree, stone wall, twisted tree. I like the tree stuff. Yeah, it does look like tree bark. I mean, it shouldn't be green. Let's make it brown and see if it does really look like tree bark. Let's make it this color brown. Yeah, we can draw a tree out of that, right? It also looks like poop, but it could be a tree. It also kind of looks like a penis. I didn't do that on purpose. It just, you know, it just happened. Um... It was a happy little accident, as they say. What else we got in here? We have some organic stuff. So I think this is, yeah. Ash, and grasses, and bamboo, clay, cotton. Cotton is like a, like a watercolory kind of situation. And then we have a bunch of different types of uh, water blotches and whatnot. And these are cool. Right? So that's an example of some of the brushes that you can play with and procreate. Now, next over here in the top right menu, there's a smudge tool, which lets you kind of, you know, smudge the canvas a little bit. So let's grab the smudge tool and then smudge some of these blotches. And you might just want to rub something out or blend something in or whatever it is you want to do. You can kind of smudge it in with the smudge tool. Very handy. And then we have an eraser tool, which is pretty obvious. But... I don't do this, um, but you could set, there's there's some pressure sensitivity on this pencil itself, wherein uh, if you tap the pencil, you can program it to do different things. I could tap to undo, for example, but I have it set so if I double tap, it opens up the color picker. So while I'm working, I could pull up the color picker real quick by just double tapping with my pencil and see how it pops up. You, I don't set it to undo because I accidentally tap it all the time. So I don't want to accidentally undo the changes as I'm trying to really make something. But the color picker thing is pretty neat. Um, so you could use the eraser tool to erase. You could paint over something to erase. Or um, or you could, uh, yeah, those are the things you could do to erase. Next we have over here to the top right, we have a layers um, dialog. And layers are really important to digital art. Um, it's a hard concept to grasp at first for a lot of people, I think. And I think maybe before we try to really make anything, I'm gonna go over the layer system here. It's very similar to Photoshop. And remember back in, think back to elementary school again, when the teacher had uh, the, the things that she projected onto the chalkboard, it was like the overhead projector thing and she would come over and put this like uh, translucent sheet with some words on it or whatever. Imagine that, that's uh, the, pretty much what the layering system is, right? So you have one base layer, which is your sheet of paper, and then you can add additional layers, which are translucent on top of that. And there's a, a million benefits to doing that. I'll get into a little bit more. Um, but here we go. So this is the layer menu, and I can create and edit my layers here. We're going to talk about layers more. We're going to talk about layers a lot because layers are very important. Um, but yeah, that's there. And then we obviously have our color picker here. When I tap on the color, it brings open the, uh, the color picker window. 
but you'll notice down here at the bottom there's some other options. So if you don't like to pick your, this is my favorite color picker um, because I can pick my, my hue this way and then I can mess with my saturation and luminance here and find the exact color that I want. But if you were working with a palette of predefined colors, like imagine you were working on a brand's logo and they had brand colors that you had to use, you might want to put those into a swatch here so you could just quickly grab the swatches of the colors that you've already predefined. And also there's a set of options down at the bottom of this color picker. You see it's set to disk. Then if I hit classic, it switches to one of these types of color pickers um, and it gives me the sliders. And then here's another one that's interesting, the Harmony color picker. So this is great because it gives you the primary color and then also the secondary color, like it's opposite, harmonious color. So if I pick this color, boom, I can switch by clicking these between the color and it's, and it's um, what, do they, what do you call that? A complementary color? Uh, it's first complementary color, like the, the strongest complementary color. So this is useful if you're doing design type stuff, if you're working with color, and I assume painters work with color all the time. Then you have uh, this, this if you already knew like the hex code of the color that you wanted to use, you could, you could type it in here. And then there's a set of predefined palettes for you to pick from. So these are colors that should just work together. Um, and I think, I think Procreate on their website allows you to get some new ones or create your own. The, that's basically, the, okay, that's an overview of the front panel. Now I'm going to tell you just about this uh, left panel here. You can see there's these two sliders. One of these sliders is to adjust the size of my brush. So I can use my thumb. If I was holding my iPad like this, that's right where my thumb would be. So I'm adjusting the size of my brush and my strokes with my thumb as I'm painting, which is pretty great. Now there's also uh, this little box here. It's kind of nondescript, but what this is is a color picker. So if you wanted to select a color that already existed in, in your artwork, you could use this color picker and say, I want that blue. And then it'll set the color that I'll, I'll actually, let's paint another color on here just so you can see. So right now our active color is the purplish color. But if I use the color picker, it sets my active color to that blue that I just let go on, right? So that's very handy if you're trying to match colors and put things together. And then we have uh, under that, there's an opacity slider. So the opacity slider is basically showing the opacity of your brush stroke. Let's put that to zero. You see, I'm not really painting anything. I'm gonna make this black so it's easier to see. And I don't have to hold this, I can put it down. So let's make a color black. Go back to the disk here that I like. Make the color black. I'm gonna set my opacity to 100%, and I'm gonna set my brush to one of these normal airbrushes, just a hard airbrush, right? So now we're painting black. Cool, we're painting black. Now if I take this opacity slider down, let's take it down to 50%, and I'll paint black. You see the difference? So it's, uh, it's still pressure sensitive. I can still make it black black, if I want to, by just holding down harder. But a normal pressure stroke now is not applying as much of the ink. Um, and you can set that as much as you want. Notice with the opacity now, if I have it set really low, it kind of works like the flow in Photoshop. Not, not really like the flow in Photoshop, but if you go over it, over and over and over, it'll apply more ink. So that might be what you want to do. If you're trying to do detailed feathering in work, or something like that, you might want to have a low opacity and then, you know, kind of work it in until it starts to be just as visible as you need it to be for whatever it is you're doing. Cool. And then you have your undo and redo buttons here, but I don't use those ever for undo and redo. I use two fingers, two fingers undoes. So you can see we're undoing paint strokes and then three fingers redoes, puts them back if you, if you go too far. So that's super handy. And that's a basic overview of, um, of the Procreate window here. Now I'm going to take a little break and I'll come back and we'll start actually painting something. All right. So I hope that uh, this is helpful for you so far. I'm going to check the comments and see uh, if there's anything we need to do.
there's this idea that in portraiture is the photographer. And we are back with that little uh, aside from Annie Leibovitz. Thanks to her for all her contributions to society over the years. Uh, and we are back. If you're just joining us, we're playing with Procreate on the iPad. It's a great app. It costs $10. Um, I'm using the iPad and the Apple Pencil, which works as a great uh, mixed media device for painting and stuff. Best part about it is you can do this all on the couch and uh, you don't have to pay for paint. That's cool. Now, there's one thing I want to get straight where I'm talking about how great the iPad is and everything. That's because I already have an iPad, right? I don't know if I... Maybe I would. If you're really into art and you have some money, maybe I would recommend the iPad. But if, you're, uh, if your primary purpose is for art, you could do this a lot cheaper with other materials. It doesn't have to be the iPad. iPad's nice, though, if, uh, if you have another reason to have one. So cool. That being said, let's go back into the wonderful world of Procreate. And here we go. So this is Procreate again. We just went through all this. Let's just start a, a canvas and start playing. Show you how it, I would actually use this. So here's my, uh, my fresh canvas. Blow this dog hair off the screen. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty new to painting in general, so I'm still at the mountains and uh, trees Bob Ross stage, so that's where we're, that's where we're going to go. I'm going to start here by drawing a little, you know what, let's put some water in this thing. I'm going to start here with a sketch. So I'm going to grab this pencil, I'm going to make it black, and I'm going to sketch in This is going to be like, I don't know if it's a river or a lake or something, it's going to be water in our scene. Cool. Right, and then I think this here is going to be our horizon. And off in the distance here, we're going to have our little mountain. I'm going to grab a different pencil. I don't like this one. Yeah, this is better. See how easy that was? I was just like, I don't like this pencil. I'm going to grab a different pencil. And then I just grabbed a different pencil. And I'm like, oh, this, this pencil is better. Just go with it. I'm just trying to, you know, not make this too uniform. I'm not really too much into it but here we go here's our mountain and then let's give it I kind of want to give it like a fence or something else but uh, it might be too much let's just start here let's start here and then figure out where we're gonna go so I know I got some water I got some grass I got a mountain and I got a sky let's start with uh Let's start with the grass. The grass sounds good. So what I'm gonna do here, remember I was talking about layers earlier. This is why they're important. I'm gonna show you um, how to use layers. So I wanna put my grass on its own layer so that when I'm working with the grass, I'm only working with the grass. So I'm gonna click back here on layer one. This was our original layer. This is what I just drew this sketch on. I'm going to click on this layer and rename it to sketch so I know what it is later. Um, because this can get out of hand really fast. If you get a lot of layers, it can become difficult to keep track of them. So make sure if you're going to use layers, especially if you're going to use a lot of layers, make sure you, you uh, label them appropriately, obviously. So that's our sketch. This layer two is going to be our grass. So I'll click on it, rename, and well, let's make this grass. Cool, and I want this to be an oil painting because, um, I don't know, I think it makes it look better because <laughs> I don't have to try that hard. So I'm going to come into my brushes here, painting. Let's find an oil paint brush, oil paint brush. Boom. And then let's get a green color. And 
And then I'm just going to start kind of applying paint inside the grassy area. I'm using a pretty small brush so that I don't go over the line. Not that it really matters, because at the end we're going to turn the that sketch line off anyway, so you won't even see it. This is just helping me visualize what it is I'm trying to paint. Cool. So that's some grass. Now I'm just going to pick a few. Let's get some like warm colors in there too. So some browns and oranges, like there would be grasses back here maybe. Just apply some of that. Makes it look a, lot, a, a little, well that's probably too much. I think probably around where the water is would be greener. I don't really know. I'm just trying to think about how the world works when I'm doing this. What would it really look like if I was looking at it? Well, it probably would be dark, like dark green, darker greener and like lusher vegetation. So let's make our brush a little bit smaller and add some, ooh, that might be too much, but maybe not. Let's add some darker greens in here. Cool. Go back to my oranges and browns around in here. I'm doing little patches where there's some stuff. Great. Ta da! All right. Now, let's go to our layers panel. And I'm going to show you that we can just turn this on or off with this little check mark. So all the work we did is just on this one invisible onion layer, basically, um, which is fantastic. Cool, now let's do the water. I'm gonna add a new layer, and I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go up to rename, and then we'll call it water. Awesome. Now let's, we're still on oil paint. That's the brush we're gonna use, cool. Let's find a water color with like a dark blue. And then just start putting some color in. Let's make the brush bigger. I'm trying to make my hand my hand go in the flow that the water would really go. Right? It would bounce here and then come back here. So I want the strokes to look like it's really moving in that direction. Because that just makes sense to do. Um, so, cool. Now we have this fast moving water. We should probably put a little bit of green here to make this bend make more sense. So I'm going to go to my layer here where we have our grass. I'm going to go back to my grass layer and I'm going to add some more grass. So let's pick you know what, I'll use this color picker and let's pick the green we already used so we can be exact. Awesome, see how it put that green up here? All I did was hold this little square and then click around and you can, where I, where I let go, you can see the bottom color is the color that we're on right now. That's the active color and the top color is the one you're hovering over. So I'm going I just want to get one of these greens that's naturally in there, right? So now we've got one. Cool. I'm gonna, I still got my oil brush, so let's just put it some green in here. That's all, not very hard. And then I'm gonna show you the layers again. Let's go back and you'll see that that green is still there even if I turn off the water. So boom, can you see, are you starting to see uh, how powerful the layers can be? I hope you are. Let's keep going. Next we have our little mountain. Let's make a new layer and we'll click on it, rename it and we'll call it mountain. Then I'm gonna pick dark brown 
the Doc Browns and the Browns in general are usually somewhere around the oranges, just if you didn't know that. Because I always, I'm like, where the fuck is brown? Brown is really just like a really dark orange. And then I'm going to use a relatively small brush size. You can see over here as I move this slider, um, it's showing you an example of what that brush really looks like. And that's pretty neat. So let's get a small one and I'm just going to start applying my paint in here. I'm trying to be kind of careful around the edges, but not really. It doesn't matter that much, especially because it's oil paint. And if, if you're thinking about what we're going to do later, I said we're going to turn that sketch off so those lines aren't even going to be there anymore so it doesn't matter if i'm in in them the point of those lines the point of the detail up here was just to make it look more like a mountain than a hill that's all we need to achieve now cool now we have our little mountain and the thingy and i like it I'm going to add just some other browns, some darker browns in there, here and there, just to, with a bigger brush. Just to give it some dimension. I'm trying to think of, actually, I don't like that I've put all this dark brown over towards the left edge, because that's where I'm going to put the sun. I think if the sun is shining from the left edge, then the darker areas should be on the right. So I'm going to use my two fingers to undo until that smudge goes away. Cool, and then I'm gonna just focus the darker bits over on the other side here, where where it would be darker. We can get some uh, some darkness in here, but you know, go back to a lighter brown and put some more paint. Looks like we just don't have enough paint on this. Here we go. That's nice. Painting's fun. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know it was fun. All right. So let's find a sky blue. Sky blues are generally light blues. So let's let's go with this light blue. And I'm going to use a smallish brush size because I don't want to destroy the mountain. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to click on it, rename, and let's make that the sky. Awesome. Now let's start putting some paint. I like that I'm brushing really lightly because I like leaving the white in there. I don't know. I think it... Uh, it looks cooler that way. It looks more painted, I guess. I don't know. It looks manual. You know, you could fill this in and make it solid, but I'm going to undo those strokes because they look weird. That looks pretty good. I dig that. Okay. So now, now we need to add, I guess, some detail to this. We have a basic kind of landscape here this mountain definitely could use some texture so let's uh let's i haven't decided if i want to put add the texture to the mountain layer if i or if i want to make a new layer called mountain texture mm. it's a decision i have to make because do i want to be able to go back to this original mountain at some point or is destructively adding more paint to this okay? Hmm. Well, it only took me like five minutes to make this, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's just paint right over it and see what happens. You, but that's a decision you'll have to make with your artwork. Do you Is what you're doing destructive? And do, do you need to be able to go back to it? Uh, let's see what fresco. That looks like a texture. Let's see what that looks like in the mountain. It looks terrible, and that's the sky's color, so that's not good. 
I want the color to be dark. So I'm going to pick this dark one that I used before. This is this immediate uh, batch of swatches down under the color picker here is just my most recently used colors. So I'm going to go back to the darkest brown I've used so far. And then I'm going to pick, um, let's go to textures. That would make sense, right? Because that's what I'm looking for. Let's see what Kurawong looks like. If we paint that, it it's kind of it's kind of what I wanted it to be. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller so I can get in there, and then I'm going to just start kind of just putting this texture in the mountain. It's just adding a little something. That's all. A little bit of variation to make it look real. There's uh, obviously other variations we'd probably see. There might be a little tree up here. Let's put a little tree up there. I love lone trees. There's nothing better than just when you're out in the landscape and there's just a tree by itself for no reason in the middle of nowhere. I love lone trees. So let's put a lone tree in here. I'm going to... Uh, uh, what should we do? Should we paint it or should we ink it? Let's paint it. Let's go back to oil because it would make sense that it would all be in oil. And let's just use a really small oil brush and a really dark green. And then let's make a new layer up here. And we're going to call this one tree. Now, now I've reached a quandary. I've reached a dilemma because the only tree that I know how to draw is a pine tree. <laughs> and I don't think that a pine tree would grow on this mountain plateau. Uh, so what kind of tree would grow on this? Probably just a sickly looking branchy one. <laughs> let's, so let's start with that. Let's actually, instead of using green, we'll use a really dark brown, maybe darker than the darkest one we've used so far, almost black. And then I'm trying to think of what tree branches would look like. Oh, well, it could be a cactus. This is probably too, no, that's too much. And also, I don't like the way it's applying the ink, so let's pick another brush. I like this one that's called Gauche. I, I, Lisa told me that this was some kind of uh, like a blendy watercolor type effect. I don't know. Let's see if it works. I'll try a really small gauche. It's not what I want either. What do I want? I'm just going to play with them until one of them looks like what I want it to look like. I might just want a pencil. Yeah. So it would be kind of small and sickly. Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. This does not look like a tree. This looks like grass. So since I can't draw a tree with any level of success, I'm going to try and maybe just put some grass up there because that would be natural. I did see down in these brushes here that one of them looks like grass. Sword grass? Is it this? Let's pick a orangish grassy yeah like that oh it's like hay oh that's cool this doesn't make any sense but check this out whoa that's the coolest thing i've ever seen all right all right don't get distracted trying to make a tree or some grass but that's not working 
Maybe I'll just abandon the tree. Or, you know what I could do? Because this is the wonderful world of procreate. I'm going to put a pine tree up there anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to make my dark green. And then I'm just going to make a line. Like so. And then I'm going to start kind of doing my little zigzaggy thing. And this takes a little while. And I don't want it to get too wide because pine trees don't get too wide. I'm just kind of moving my hand in little zigzag patterns, trying not to be too repetitious. And I can see it's starting to look like a tree. I mean, it's way better than the one I was drawing, for sure. It just would never exist in this place. And then that looks cool. And I'll take a orangey brown-ish color. And then I'm just going to make that trunk a little trunkier. Awesome. And then give it like... Maybe a little bit of a root system there. All right. Egregious Christmas tree in our landscape image, but that's okay. Um, now, you'll also see all of our layers here. We can turn off any of these elements we want. We could replace them. We could be like, I don't like that tree. I want to try a different tree. We could make a new layer and just hide this and then draw a different tree and compare. So that's interesting. Um, there's... Uh, a lot of different things you can do with the layers that I, I don't really want to start right now. Um, but what I would like to do is put in here, let's rename this guy, a fence. And it looks like maybe there'd be some kind of a fence back here or something in this area. Let's grab, I like the pencil. And I'm going to start just, I want a smaller pencil though. It's not working. Let's try a different one. I'll go back to this HB pencil. That worked out for me last time. It's good enough. So here's my fence. It's not straight because they usually aren't really. And it goes to off into there. And then maybe, what kind of animal could I draw? Maybe a cow? <laughs> I don't know what I can draw. Maybe you get the point here for painting in uh, Procreate. I hope that you do. I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you how to do something different. Now, one of the coolest things about the iPad is it's um, it's multitasking. And by multitasking, I mean the ability to control two apps at the same time. This is super handy in Procreate because we can open up any reference material that we want, either in the app itself or right next to it. So if, if you're not familiar with how this works, on the iPad, there's uh, this particular iPad doesn't have any buttons on it. Um, the way that you do what the home button would do is, is you slide up with your finger. Um, so this works, this method of sliding with your finger works on all iPads, but you might not know about it if you have an older iPad with a button. It does the same thing the button does. So to multitask, you slide your finger up on this little bar here, and it brings up your task bar. So these are all the things in your dock, the apps that you have assigned to your dock, and things that you've opened most recently. Now, to open an app up alongside another app, you just hold your finger on that and then pull it up and you can snap it to the side there, right? And now I have a side-by-side -side view of my web browser and my Procreate window. And I can pinch and zoom in this window and then I can go to, let's say, pictures of um, uh, lemurs, L-E-M-U-R picture of a lemur 
I don't even know what a lemur looks like, but we're going to find out and we're going to draw one. That's going to be cool. Let's, let's grab this guy because that looks cool. Here's our lemur. Hey, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to make that window uh, smaller. See, in between these two apps, there's a little gray bar that I can click on and adjust the size of either of these two windows. If I put my finger on that and start to slide it, you can see that I can make Safari bigger or I can make Procreate bigger. So I want to make Procreate bigger and this smaller. And then I'm going to go up to the gallery and I'm going to make a new A4 size document. You can use whatever size you want. I'm using A4 because it's just normal and standard size. And now I can grab my black pencil and start sketching that. Now, I'm not particularly good at sketching in general, so I need additional help. Uh, let's just, I'm going to do it this way and see how well we do. And then... And then I'll try another way and see how well we do. But this is just drawing. I'm not painting anymore. I'm just drawing. He's got two really round eyes. And then those are kind of like shaded in. This is terrible. This is not good. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. And then he's got like a, oh, I don't want your ad there. I want a picture of that guy. It's no fun. Isn't he a news anchor, that guy? This is all shaded in. This is his face. This is even more shaded in because his nose is here. This is a terrible picture of a lemur. Yeah, I told you I wasn't a painter. I'm not a drawer. But that's okay. Let's try let's try it another way. So I'm gonna create another layer here on top of this. I'm gonna call it reference. And then I'm gonna hide the layer we just drew on. So we don't even see it anymore. I don't know if this works, I'm trying it right now. I'm gonna try to just drag this picture over here. Look at that. Isn't that ridiculous? So now I've just pulled that picture right into Procreate, and I can use my fingers. I didn't know that was going to work. I'm glad it did. I, abs I accidentally flicked it upside down. Okay. That was very cool. <laughs> I'm glad that worked. Thanks, Procreate. All right. So now we're going to make our lemur here. And then I'm going to go to my layer menu and hit this little N. So I don't know why it's an N, but there's a, a menu here. If you click on this little N, it drops open. These are blend modes, which we'll get into in a different screencast. Um, but what I'm interested in in this menu is the opacity slider for each layer. So in the same way that we saw how opacity works with the brush, you can actually do that with a layer too. So we can start to make this layer translucent. Check that out. As I slide it down, he starts to kind of fade away. That's very convenient. Now, I'm going to create one more layer, and let's call it Sketch. Awesome. So now I can faintly see the outline of what I'm sketching. And let's see how that turns out. Because now I'm no longer... You know, now I'm no longer trying to translate what I am seeing. I'm really just tracing. And I don't know. I mean, maybe this is cheating. I mean, it's definitely cheating. But this is definitely an amazing way to learn how to draw. Like, if you don't know how to draw, or even if, even if you don't care. Even if you don't, even if you don't care about being good at it, if you're just like sitting on the couch and you want something to do that is gonna turn your mind off from whatever it is that has a grip on your mind, this is like doing a puzzle, or this would be the same 
you know, as a crossword or anything like that that people do. And now I'm just kind of outlining his fur. And I'm going to start to put some of these darker areas in, shaded in. Notice if I tilt my pencil, it, it behaves as if I tilted a real pencil. Like the stroke gets a little bit wider. That is amazing. Like people made this. People created this out of nothing. How did that happen? Shading in that little dark area in his eyes. And then we can put in, you know, this was a shady area here. Well, by shady area, I mean this is where his fur is darker. So I'm shading it in. Right. And then it's darker up here. Now, I'm not really taking my time with this. And I don't, I'm not saying I could do it well. I'm pretty sure if I spent an hour and a half, you know, going over each of these lines, I could draw a pretty good lemur. And now I'll just make his nose even darker. Give him some stripes here. You know, I'm just shading in some of the fur that he would have that I can kind of see in that opaque layer and that it's actually not opaque it's translucent and then I'll give him some whiskers I think he had whiskers oh I'm still looking over here I forgot right I can see the detail of him over here so I can see that he does have whiskers and they're coming out of this black area here all right um, now let's go to our layers here and turn off the reference and I'm not going to call it good, but it's way better than I could have done without that assistance. I mean, I wouldn't have even tried. Uh, so that's interesting. Now we've got our lemur. Let's get rid of this window. We don't need Safari anymore. So I'm just going to drag it out of the way. And let's get our oil brush from painting, oil paint. Let's start taking some of this. Well, I'm going to do this on a new layer just in case I don't like it because I don't want to ruin my sketch. I like the sketch. I want to be able to go back to it and show it to people and be like, look what I made. So in case this goes catastrophically wrong, I'm going to do it on its own layer. I'm going to name it paint. Right, there's no rule about layers when you have to use them and when you don't have to use them. But there's a, a lot of times I've been disappointed with myself for not having my work on its own layer. And now I'm turning our little rip off sketch there into an oil painting. This is probably smaller than realistic oil brush. Yeah, lemur. I'm pressing fairly hard around the eyes because that was really dark. And see how much more paint's getting applied there. I'll kind of fade that in a little more so it looks more, so he looks like a superhero lemur. Because that's kind of what it looks like to me, and, uh, yeah. Fill him in more and more paint, more paint, more paint. Actually, if I recall correctly, it was the other way around. The center part of our lemur's nose was darker than what's around it but I think this looks cool, so I'm going to leave it that way because I make the rules. This is my picture. Nobody can tell me what to do. 
Putting some paint in the lemur. There's a lemur on the painting, yeah. Do, 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 do. I didn't know that I could draw a lemur. I bet you didn't think I could, did you? I don't think I, uh, where do lemurs come from? I don't even know where lemurs are at. There's no lemurs around here. Is that an Australian thing? I don't know. And then I'm going to just kind of give one of these shade ins down here, like I see painters do sometimes, because that fills in the space I didn't want to use. I could also just crop this to be smaller. But I like it. I like our lemur. I'm not sure what else I would do to it. Maybe I would come up back to our sketch, back to our pencil, um, and try and put in some some more like finer details here. But for demonstration purposes, I painted this thing that I can't paint. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I am going to take a break. And we will return, and uh, I'm going to read these comments, and we'll see if we're going to go with more Procreate or if I should swap over to Photoshop. So you guys let me know uh, who's paying attention to what, and I will adjust accordingly. Oh, hey. It's you. I decided that I should take a little trip. I'm gonna head down to the great state of Maine to see my cousin Derek. So I'm uh, packing up the gear here. Here's all the batteries I'm gonna take with me. My drone and all this jazz and a uh, picture of the dog. And let's do it. Much earlier than I did. So this is I've come upon my. 
first detour, I saw uh, off the highway uh, a train that stopped over here. It looks like it's a bit broken down. So I'm gonna go see if I can find it. Well, I didn't find the train tracks. I couldn't see them on the map. Uh, I know I saw a full stopped train with a bunch of cars on it. It probably would've been cool, but eh, it's gonna divert me from my primary purpose, which is to go see D-Mac. snow. Why is there snow on the side of the road? There's no snow in Massachusetts. There's snow here. Uh, this could be rough. This could be a rough night. I don't know. So I seem to have made a pretty critical mistake in that I left uh, to come up here to see DMAC a little bit too late in the day and I seem to have lost all the light. So now it's it's dark out. It's gonna to be tough to find a photo adventure here in Maine because there's, I don't think I'm gonna find any like cityscapes or anything like that out in the middle of the woods. I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to get some star shots. Maybe I'll do one of those crazy star trail things where the stars all spiral because you leave the shutter open for a long time. Yesterday I decided to embark on an epic journey to see my cousin Derek, who lives in uh, the backwoods of Maine. And I drove up here, I left a little bit late. That was my fatal mistake, and by the time I arrived in Maine, everything was dark, pitch dark and closed. I couldn't get to any of the lighthouses, uh, all I could really do is take photos of the stars, which are beautiful out here, but uh, it's not the right time of the year for the Milky Way, and uh, it just wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. So, I found myself this $50 Days in in, uh, in Bath, which is a little city, I guess between Portland and Small Point, which is where all the lighthouses and beachfronts are. So I got up this morning and decided I'm going to go explore those areas. like we are at the Phippsburg Center. Squirrel Point Lighthouse is straight across the way there. That's Squirrel Point Lighthouse. So let's go take a better look there, see if we get a good view. This is probably marshy, find out. So far it's solid. This is exactly what you would expect Maine to look like. I feel like I'm on the set of a Stephen King movie. I bet it's cold. Oh, it's getting muddy. If I were you, I'd laugh at me. Here we go, I'm gonna jump over to that other rock. This is super safe. All right, so, welcome to Maine. It's cold. It's really cold. I had to go back to the car and bundle up a little bit before I make my way up to this, uh, looks like an abandoned castle. Maybe. I don't really know what it is. There's a few of these. It's kind of Alcatrazy, but this place is pretty cool. I'll let you know what I see when I get up there.
And we are back. Thank you for uh, sticking around with me as we play with computers and art stuff. Um, so, in the live chat here, which I seem to have lost, I'm asking whether you guys would like to continue with Procreate, or if we should move on to doing similar type work, or different work entirely, in Photoshop. Because those are both uh, good options for us. So, which would you like to see? Um, Let's see. I think we've got about a 40 second lag, so I'm going to give you guys 40 seconds or so to let me know what you want me to do. Um, otherwise, I'm going to choose for you, and you might not like what I go with. Thank you. I see that a Deborah Walker loved the main, the main trip, I, I assume you're talking about. Thank you. That was... A strange, sudden, one-night trip. Uh, Alright, well, I haven't heard from you, so I'm going to switch. And we're going to start talking about Photoshop for a while. Because not everybody is in the Apple world. Some people have you know, fundamental disagreements with their business practices or whatever. And the fact remains, uh, we can do both. So let's do both. Now, something I want to explain to you about Photoshop in general and the kind of work that we do with it. So let's swap over to our uh, desktop. Okay. So here's our desktop. This is what uh, my screen is looking like right now. I want to add, I'm just going to add uh, the other camera here so you can see my desk and my hands because you can't see those right now. So let me uh, pop over here into OBS. I'm going to add a video capture device. And it's going to be the studio cam. No, nope. it's going to be the desk cam. Boom. Now we have our desk cam over here. Now I'm just gonna swap them so that I'm on top and my hands are on the bottom. I'm gonna make that relatively big. And then we're gonna transition so that's what you guys see. Here we go. All right, so here's my iPad. I'm gonna just get rid of this for now, put this away. Oh, another thing, if you don't know about the Apple Pencil, just before I put this away, the uh, it charges with a magnetic strip by just clipping right there. That's pretty cool. And then uh, and then it'll be ready to go next time I want to use it. So we're gonna get this out of the way and let's uh, let's pop into the wacky and wonderful world of Photoshop. So right now we are up to uh, I believe it's Photoshop twenty twenty. You'll see that I have two different versions of Photoshop installed on my computer. That is, I have no idea why I have two versions of Photoshop installed on my computer. But it confuses me all the time, and I haven't got around to uninstalling this one. I'm just going to make sure that I pick the latest version of Photoshop, which is 2020. So let's open up Photoshop here. And you don't need to see this OBS window anymore, I don't think. I kind of do, though. Hmm. I'll just make it small. There we go. All right. So here we are in Photoshop. And let's make this small too. I'm just adjusting these windows here so they make more sense so we can see everything appropriately, right? So I have to have this little, well, I don't have to have it open, but I'm going to keep this little window open just so I can see what's going on. And then we'll put Photoshop here over that. Well, I'll put this in the corner like that. 
and then I'll put this over here like that. Okay. And then we'll make this this size. Is that all right? Can you guys see everything? Okay. I'm assuming that you can. Maybe I'll make uh, I'll make my hands a little smaller. Okay. So the first thing I want to explain to you about Photoshop is that using a mouse with it sucks and you probably don't want to even try. <laughs> now, if you only have a mouse, okay, you can, you can still get around in Photoshop, but what I'm going to recommend very wholeheartedly is one of these pressure sensitive, uh, oh, Wacom tablets. I call it Wacom. Some people call them Wacoms. Um, these you'll see on pretty much any digital artist's desk. And they're an input device that allow me to use a pen very naturally um, to control my mouse cursor. So this is the pen that comes with uh, this tablet. These tablets, are not they're not super expensive. They're under $100 and they last forever. There's no batteries or anything like that. So they're a pretty good investment. Um, they come with a pen. This pen is super, super grippy. Uh, it's wide and it feels really nice. And there's two buttons on the top of the pen that can be programmed for different things. And those are very handy. You know, you might want to have one button that undoes your work and you might ha want to have another button that redoes it, for instance. Now, this tablet is large. There's a lot of surface area. They make way bigger tablets than this for people that are into like large media painting where you're kind of, you know, moving your whole arm across the desk um, with really long strokes. They, they do make those for, for artists. But this size is about, uh, it's a little bit bigger than a sheet of paper. It's way too big. It's way bigger than anything I'll ever use. So you can kind of get a, a feel for the size of this usable area, the darker area here. Um, I use, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's about a dime sized portion of this pad. Now, as I hold the pen over the pad, no, I'm not using my mouse at all right now. It is actually my pen that's controlling my mouse cursor. So this works outside of Photoshop as well. This is actually controlling my mouse. I've got the tablet set so that the area that I have to move my wrist is mapped to the exact size of my screen so that I can go from corner to corner you know, pretty fluidly without moving my wrist at all. So it's super ergonomic. So that's the cool thing. That's a cool thing about pressure sensitive uh, pens. Now, this is a little bit wonky because I just reinstalled the driver. It's not all optimized the way I like it. Uh, 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 uh. Like this, uh, this pen's moving a little slow for me. So you know what I'm going to do? Just before we go any further, I'm just going to open up my tablet properties. I'm going to, that's fine. I'm going to turn that off. This is stuff um, that I normally would have done prior to this. This is just defining the area of the tablet that I want to use with my pen. I want to make it as small as possible. So that's pretty small. And anything else I can change here? All right, cool. Now I'm done playing with my tablet thing. Let's go up to uh, File and New in Photoshop, and we're going to make a new document. And I'm going to make that document the optimal size for Facebook, which they recommend as uh, 1280 by 600, I believe. Or, yeah, 1280 by 600. I'm not positive, so I'm going to just double check. Not that it matters. We're not actually going to do anything with this thing we're going to create. But just to be sure, recommended Facebook image size. Uh, 1200 by 630. So is that what I said? Uh, I was close. 
1200 by 630. Not 830, 630. Create. Okay, cool. Now, this is not the A4 size like you would normally, like we saw in uh, Procreate. This is actually the optimal size of a Facebook post. So this would fill up the whole screen on whatever somebody's device was, if it was a tablet or phone or whatever. So starting in Photoshop, we have this blank canvas. It's, very, it's pretty similar to Procreate, but there's a lot more stuff going on. Don't worry about most of the stuff, okay? Um, all these tools and stuff, just don't even pay attention to them. I'm going to show you how to do this without even looking at all these icons. There's a couple things to go over. First of all, let's talk about let's talk some more about the importance of this pressure sensitive tablet. So, I'm going to take a brush in Photoshop. I'm going to take just a hard round brush in Photoshop. And then let's pretend I don't have a tablet and I just have my mouse. So I'm moving around my mouse in Photoshop. This feels natural using my computer, clicking on stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Now I'm going to take this blue color and I'm going to draw. Um, well, that's cool. It works. I can draw, but uh, there's, it's either 100% or it's nothing. There is no, there's no amount of uh, gradients or variance in the in the pressure sensitivity of a mouse, um, which makes it very poorly suited for drawing and painting. It's just, it's it's not the same. It's it's not good for it. Now, we have that same brush. Instead of using the mouse, I'm going to use my pen. And you'll notice the same thing because I picked the hard round brush. Oh. Hold on. Oh, it's because I have my flow set to 100. Let me swap. Let me turn this down a little bit. And also. I'm sorry, we might have to go back to Procreate because I don't have Photoshop configured correctly. I think I blew up my settings and now I don't even have my um, pressure sensitivity configured here. So that's a bummer, but it's okay. Let me see if I can fix it real quick. We'll take five minutes and if I don't have it fixed, then we'll just go back to Procreate. Or we'll go, we'll go to photo editing. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so I need to go to my brush settings. Let's see why my pen isn't doing what I want it to do. And my hand is hitting all the buttons on this tablet, and I don't want it to do that. Those should be turned off. So let's go back to my tablet properties, turn off all those buttons. Functions. This needs to go off. All these need to turn off. Because I keep hitting them with my hand. Now, I'm not sure why um, why I have to reset all these settings, because they've I've been using them all week. So I just turned on the computer today, and it was all gone. Maybe the driver updated or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's the way. this is the way things go. If you're going to do digital anything, it's just... So I'm going to disable all this touch ring. I don't want that. You might want to use some of these things if you get one of these. Uh, there's a bunch of buttons, but I just find all I want is this one little dime sized area to draw with Photoshop and anything else on this tablet just gets in my way. So I'm turning all that off. Touch, we've turned touch off. That's all off. Pen. This is all fine. Dun, 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 dun. And then there's one more setting I want to check in here. Mouse settings. Additional mouse options. I just want my mouse to move a little bit faster. So I'm going to turn up the speed of my mouse a little bit.
Okay. Now this is feeling a little bit better to me. So let's see what we got in here for some brushes. <laughs> I'm going to grab this one that actually says pressure opacity on it. And then I'm going to grab a big white brush. And I'm just going to paint white over this mess. So now we have a fresh canvas. Now I'm going to make my brush smaller again. Okay. Now, let's change my color to black and go back and do this. So I've got this soft round pressure opacity. Um, let me turn my flow back to 100%. Pressure opacity adjustable brush. This means this brush is configured so that as I add additional pressure, it gets darker. It's not getting darker like it should because something's broken. Boo. Boo. Let me try this one. Also, let's go back to our settings here. My tablet settings. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. And just check on tip feel. Tip feel is showing me the pressure sensitivity as I press, right? So I can see how hard I have to press to get to the maximum. I can tell that it's definitely the pressure sensitivity is working, but Photoshop isn't, doesn't seem to be uh, caring about that. So you know what? Let's just try and quit and restart Photoshop. Maybe that's it. And if that doesn't work, then we'll just go right back to Procreate. That's all. Close that. Nothing's worse than technical difficulties when you're live, but it can't be avoided. It always happens. So let's, see, let's create a new one. This overlay keeps coming up to tell me all these buttons are disabled, and I don't want it to. I'm not sure what it is I'm hitting that's doing that. So we're going to create this. All right. Switch to my brush tool. I'm going to come to my general brushes. Let's get soft round pressure size and we'll make it small. Okay. I see. So I think actually the problem this whole time is that this tablet has been too sensitive and I've been just pressing, my normal press has been too hard. So that's cool. We're back in action with Photoshop. So sorry about that. I'm gonna make one little adjustment to my tablet, my pen sensitivity. And also I wanna see if I can shut up what, uh, whatever that uh, overlay is off. So let's go to my tablet properties. And, mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to make it a little firmer, so I have to press harder. That's better. And then uh, functions, show express view. I bet that's the thing that's annoying me. All right. Back in action. All right. Cool. So I'm going to go back to this hard round brush. I'm going to make it white and I'm just going to paint over all this. Make my brush big. Now let's pretend we just started and we just opened Photoshop. So there's a few different brushes here in the general brushes. These are the brushes that Photoshop comes with. When you open Photoshop in a new document, you can get to the brush tool by hitting the B key. Obviously, B means brush. If you bring open uh, your brush, you should get some options up at the top here related to the brush. Those are options, the ones that you're probably most interested in initially, are your opacity and your flow. I'm going to set them both to 100% for now. Also, you'll see over here in the right, I have brushes 
which has my collection of brushes and kind of what they look like. And also to the right of that, I have my brush settings. My brush settings allow me to uh, change pretty much anything about the brush. Um, so we can go into that in some detail, maybe later. Here's uh, the difference I was trying to show you about the mouse. So I've got my mouse here and I'm clicking and dragging with this brush, right? And it's putting all the paint it can down. It's soft, it's kind of blurry because it's a soft brush, but I cannot control beyond that uh, the how it looks at all, right? That's what the brush is gonna look like. If I use my pressure sensitive pencil though, now as I press harder, you can see I start to apply more or less ink in the same way that the Apple Pencil works. Right? It's exactly the same. It has the same kind of feel and everything. So that's great. There are some other cool things about the pencil that are helpful when you're painting, mainly. So if I hold on my keyboard my, um, my Windows key and the Alt key together and then click the little button on my... Uh, my pen, I get this little tool that allows me to really quickly, by just moving my hand up and down, adjust my brush. This is super handy and it helps you do things really fast, especially in um, photo editing. Like imagine you're doing a retouch uh, and clearing up acne or something. So you can come in here and make this the exact size of whatever blemish or whatever you're working on and clean that up really fast without ever um, really moving your hands at all, which is important if you're gonna do this kind of work, because you don't wanna hurt your hand, you don't want like repetitive injuries, and uh, this is super ergon ergonomic. So, this is how you can adjust both the brush size, if I go left and right with my hand, right, I'm holding the control and Windows keys right now on a Mac that's command and uh, whatever's next to command, option. Um, so left and right controls the size, and up and down, you'll see controls the hardness of the brush. As I go up, the brush gets kind of fuzzier and blurrier. And as I go down, sorry, my hand's a little jittery. As I go down, um, it gets more solid. So here we go. We're just painting this all blue. Now, let's do a similar thing that we were doing in Procreate. I'm just going to grab uh, this ultimate pencil. Right, and let's make it black. And let's make our background white again. Let's start with a fresh canvas. This time I'm just gonna use uh, G. I'm gonna hit the G key on my keyboard and that brings up the paint bucket tool. Paint bucket tool is useful for doing things like that if you wanted to fill in an area with a particular color. It's just faster than brushing over it in this case. So you can see when I hit the G key, I'm not sure why they use G as the key. They just did. Um, my cursor turns into a little paint bucket and I can fill the area with whatever color I pick with that paint bucket. We want to use white because it's fresh canvas. Now I'm going to hit the B key on my keyboard again to go back to the brush tool. Right. So almost all the time when I'm switching tools, I'm using those keys instead of using all this mess over here. Um, so it's useful if you're looking for a specific thing and you know what you're looking for, but otherwise you're just going to get confused, I think. So try to learn learn the things you want to do and then learn what keys go to those tools and then you don't ever have to worry about the workspace at all because it can get overwhelming. Now, uh, what were we doing? I'm going to take this pencil, I'm going to make it black, and then let's uh, scribble a little. Okay, cool, it works. Let's try and make kind of our... Same-ish image. I'm going to make a horizon line here. Here's a horizon. And... Here's our hill. Right? You can imagine that this is Procreate. It's basically the same thing, except Photoshop's been around for 30 years, and it's gotten big and super, super, super powerful. Procreate's new and fast and modern and hip, you know, but Photoshop's, Photoshop's where it's at, really. Photoshop deserves the respect. Everything else is just a ripoff of Photoshop. Um, 
Cool. I think this is going to be water here. So now what I want to do, like in Procreate, down here, I have my layers, just like they were in Procreate. I'm going to make a new layer. And on that new layer, I'm going to click on it. Uh, and I'm going to rename this water. Cool. Now let's find a cool water brush. And I'm just going to look through my brushes over here. Now, when you open up Photoshop, it's unlikely that your workspace is going to look like mine because I've configured mine for this particular thing. That's fine. If ever you're looking for any of these particular tools, just think about what they are. You need the brushes and you need the brush settings and you need the layers. And that's probably all you need to start out. If you can't find those things, you can come up here to window and all of the different things that you can pull up, including like if you were working with text, you could bring up the, the font size tools and the font stuff. All, all that stuff is in here. So you can see which ones I have checked off that are visible. I have my brushes visible and the color thing, which is over here. And then my histogram is up here, which I don't really need for painting. But uh, And then also my layers. You could also hit here the F7 key. If you look through the, the menus here, it shows you what the key commands are, which is really handy. So if you find yourself using one of these things all the time, then just learn what the key command is. And then anytime uh, you need to get to that tool, you just hit the key simple. All right. Um, so we are in water. What was I going to do here? Wet media brushes. Oil paint would be a wet media, probably. Kyle's Real Oil Flex Wet. Let's see what this looks like. Looks like an oil paint. Cool. So let's pick a blue color for our water. And then let's just start painting some water. I'm going to use my little trick here. I'm going to hold Windows key and Alt. And then mm, just my brush size. And we'll put in some water here. getting kind of laggy on me. I'm not sure if that's just because it's laggy or if that's because of uh, the stream. doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've got some water in there. That's cool. Let's make another layer. And you can make another layer by either, uh, well, there's a key command for it. I think it's Command-J. Uh, but I'm just going to make another layer by clicking this new layer button over here. This little button's always part of the layer panel, so I can always count on it actually being there in this same spot. So I click on the new uh, layer button here, and let's click on this. Do, 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 come on. And we'll call this one Mountain. And then we'll come up here to our color picker. And we'll find some kind of brownish color. I want it to be more reddish brown. Yeah, like that. Cool. And now I'm going to start applying. I don't really like this brush. It's kind of like, this is kind of crayon-y. And I want oil painty. So I'm just going to find another brush. Let's try the Real Oils 1. This is behaving more like an oil paint brush to me. I like that better. But let's see if there's a better option. Uh, here's some brushes that I've installed from third parties. I have some watercolor brushes in here. There's some spatter brushes. But we're looking for a great oil brush. I guess Kyle's Real Oils 1 is the way we're going. Now, you can always install... Uh, new brushes in Photoshop. I'll show you how in a minute. It's not hard at all. There's millions of brushes that are free that do all sorts of different stuff. You can find a brush that paints an iris if you wanted to. If you did like a lot of faces and stuff, you could find a brush that paints a tree or a very complex, um, not 
not obvious pattern of trees, you know. And then we'll add some, you know, another brown color in there just to give it some, some feeling, you know, some depth. And we're painting, it looks like a big pile of poop on a river. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, we are going to make another layer. And we're going to call this one the sky. And then I'll pick a darker blue. Like it should probably be a lighter blue than the water, but whatever. I wouldn't say that this particular brush is looking like an oil. I would say that this looks like a crayon to me, but uh, whatever. That's all right. Painting on there. Now, if we want to get some more brushes, you can see in this little brush menu over here, there's a more menu. The more menus in Photoshop in most applications are just like three or four lines. Some people call it a hamburger menu, something like that. It's just a more menu. There's more stuff in there that they didn't have space to put. So under here, there's an option down towards the end for get more brushes. If we click on get more brushes, this brings us to Adobe's collection of all these different brushes that we can install as part of the Adobe Creative Cloud membership, which you get if you're paying for Photoshop. Um, so there's a whole mega pack of brushes that has tons of different, you know, all, all sorts of different stuff, but there's, there's specific ones if you're looking for um, something unique. Um, like, that looks cool, these kind of comic book drawing brushes. Let's download those and see what they do. Oh, we'll come back. We'll play with that later. I don't want to get too distracted from our little mountain. I just wanted to show you how to install new uh, new brushes. So you just go to get more brushes, and then it brings you to this website where there's a bunch of brushes, and you can install them from here. Those are straight from Adobe, or you could also install them from a you know, plethora of other places, wherever they sell brushes. There's a million places on the internet that sell custom ones for every different thing you can think of. So that's pretty cool. All right. So now let's add a little sun in here. I'm going to go up, add a little sun, new layer. We're going to make this the sun. And then let's pick a yellow. And if, if you're just tuning in, we have decided it's good practice really to do digital work like this in these layers where in each layer has its own sort of thing going on. Um, that way you can always go back and make changes if you need to, to particular parts of your artwork. So let's say we go through all this and then ah, the mountain is really, really bad. Instead of ruining all my work, I can just come over here and turn that layer off and replace that with something else, right? You can see how we started this whole thing with just this pencil sketch, and now we can get rid of that entirely. We don't need that. Let's put our mountain back in. Boom, right? So let's, uh, what do we want to do with our painting here? This is water. I think there would probably be some kind of a reflection on the water, right? So since we've got our mountain here, I'm just going to delete this little mask that didn't, uh, wasn't supposed to be there. Okay, so I'm just going to take this mountain layer and I'm going to drag it onto the new layer. That's going to make me a copy. So now we have two mountains, which is interesting. Why would I do such a thing? I'm going to hit the V key, V as in Victor, or uh, yeah, Vigo, uh, Vermont, some other V words, Vector. All right, so I hit the V key for move for whatever reason. I don't know why V is move. Same reason paint bucket fill is G, I guess. You just got to just go with it. So notice I've got a copy of that layer. That layer is just the mountain. There's nothing else on this except the mountain. I can... 
hide everything but this layer, and we'll see this is just the mountain we painted, which is amazing because check out what we can do. Now um, let me bring all these other layers back in. And let's take this, and uh, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to hit, I think it's up here. Let's go to edit, and then I think transform, and then rotate 180 degrees. Boom. Now I've just taken a copy of that layer that we painted. I flipped it upside down, and now I'm just going to whoop. Now, now we have our reflection, but a reflection obviously wouldn't be as saturated as that is. So let's take this layer here and you'll notice over um, above the layers next to the blend modes, there's an opacity slider. And this opacity slider is the opacity of the layer itself. So if I pull this opacity down, that layer starts to go translucent. And now we have a more realistic looking um, a reflection in the water. That's very cool. Now we could turn that on or off at will because we have it on its own layer, right? We could turn the sun on or off. It's on its own layer. Let's create another layer and I'll find a brush that's cool. Uh, maybe a charcoal pencil. Let's see what that looks like. I'll just grab black for a second and we'll paint charcoal. Good enough for me. So I'm going to grab a brownish color. There's a lot of browns in this image. And I'm going to start drawing my little canoe boat. Do, 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 do. Or like a banana boat. Get on the boat, the banana boat. This is, I don't know what kind of boat looks like this. It probably is like an like a infected pea pod. But whatever. Let's just shade in our little boat here. Shading in the boat, right? And then we can do the same trick with the boat if we're so inclined and give the boat its own reflection. Mm -mm -mm. Keep in mind, I don't draw that much. Drawing and this digital art stuff is pretty new to me, so. Take that for what it's worth. I'm trying to show you the programs and how they work and what they do more so than show you a cool image, right? Because it's not that cool an image. So I'm going to take this layer that we just created that's our boat, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag it over to the new layer so it makes a copy for me. Then I'm going to go up to Edit, and then Transform, and then rotate 180 degrees. Now we have, oh, that looks cool on its own, just the two layers uh, upside down. I'm going to take that layer, the Move tool, which is the V key, if you'll remember, and same deal. And then we'll take the opacity of that layer, and we'll turn that down as well. A lot. All right, so now we have our boat, our layers. This water kind of sucks. Let's see if we can get some more texture or something better looking. This really doesn't look like oil paint to me like it did in Procreate. Um, so that's that's not the fault of Photoshop, though. That's just whatever brush we have, we're using. We have to find the correct brush. There's also blenders in here that uh, are interesting. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a real thing in art. Blenders, is that a tool that you painters use? Where if you have a, a few different colors of paint on a canvas, then you use an, another thing to blend them together in a particular way. Is that, is that real? That's a thing in Photoshop, like this wet blender. It's not really applying paint. It's just blending the paints that are there in a way that I don't understand. Um, that's not working because I was painting on a layer. This is what it does. It kind of smudges out, which I like, right? This is what I wish I kind of want the brushes to do. This is exactly what I want, actually. This is what I wanted the brushes to do on their own, is this blend. So I'm going to go to my mountain. Um, this is the mountain layer. And I'm going to do that same thing and start blending those colors together like it would be oily. Ah, see, we're learning. 
We're learning. It also grab if there's no um, color in an area, the blenders grab the white from the background, which is, you know, so far in the little mountain things that I've drawn, it's been good. Like I've, it's been a cool effect that I like. I can see where, you know, maybe you don't want that in your image. I don't know. And then I'm gonna blend out the sky. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger because I shouldn't have to really pay so close attention. Mm, now it's too much. I don't want to blend it that much in. Yeah, like so. We might need some more blue paint around those white edges, but that's fine. Now this is starting to look more like a painting and less like a drawing. And I like that. I like the blurriness of it. It's interesting. Note that this tool right now is only blending what's on the layer. So it's only blending the blues in the sky and the whites in the sky. If I'm hitting uh, Control Z to go back in Photoshop, to go back to here, I just want to show you if you want to blend the, all the colors from all your layers, um, it, like you want to blend the blue with this brown, then you could come up here to these options here and there's a little checkbox that says sample all layers. That tells Photoshop when you're using this brush that you want the brush to look through all those layers, like uh, all the way through that onion and, and treat it as if it were one layer. Um, so. It's, it's useful to be an option, right? Sometimes you want it on, sometimes you want it off. I'll just show you the difference. So right now I have sample all layers on. So this is gonna use all the layers and you can see that it's blending the browns. If I come from the, from the right to the left, it's blending the brown into the blue. And if we get rid of that, if I come from the right to the left, it will blend the blue into the brown which makes a lot more sense than the other way when we're working on the layer and it was just smudging the, the colors around. But you could see why you would want to do it both ways. So let's smudge. This is what we're going to do. We're going to smudge out. You'll also see, I also want to call out, notice every time that I tap my pen, see that this brush rotates and moves in some way? That makes every single brush stroke unique. So there's a randomization going on um, so there's some very clever math in Photoshop that's figuring out, you know, rotate it a little bit, change the size a little bit because we don't want it to look formulaic. So I'm just going to change my colors a little bit and put in some darker browns. Well, that's not having any effect actually because we're not using a paintbrush right now. We're just using the blender, right? So I'm, what I'm trying to do is cover up some of this white around the edges of the mountain. So I'm just blending the brown. into those spots where there wasn't enough paint. And that's doing what I want it to do. You know, there's, it's art, there's more than one way to do it. Cool. Now, uh, now I'm gonna go back to, without sample all layers, and I'm gonna blend just the sky. I don't want this to really mess with the mountain much. I don't want to take the colors. I just want the blue and the white. I'm just kind of mixing these blues and whites together. As one might see in the sky. Right? So this is basically the same thing in Procreate using a pressure sensitive um, uh, tablet, which I highly recommend if you're going to use Photoshop for either painting or photo editing, this is totally worth it. And they have them at Best Buy. They're not expensive and they're absolutely worth the money. Um, it will take you a day, a week, a month, I don't know how long to, to get comfortable navigating a computer with a, with a pen because it's not, it's strange. It's weird. Um, ooh. let me bring up these windows. Sorry, I lost my windows here. Uh, 
Let's see how we doing on time. It's 12 o'clock. I'm going to take one more break here. And then when we come back, I think I want to show you how to do a composite photo in Photoshop. So if you don't know what composite photo means, I'm going to take a photo that I took. I'm going to cut some elements out of it. And then I'm going to post them into a new photo and blend them together. And maybe we'll paint on top of that um, and see how that works out. All right. So I'll see you in maybe four or five minutes ish. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on, I'm just setting up. Uh, I'm going to set up a little thing to run while I go take a little break for you. So I'm going to switch to me so you can see me. And then I'm going to find the thing I want to feed to you, <laughs> which is uh, glorious. I, I, I love that I can just shove media at you. <laughs> Let's see, what do we have here? What can we play for this break? Let's look for something relatively quick. Yeah, I am. That's not quick, though. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, here we go. I got one. No spoilers. Are you guys ready? I'm going to play this uh, old song challenge tune from... I decided that I should take a little trip. I'm going to head down to the great state of Maine. I ain't slept, and it's later than the last time. But I've dreamt about the flowers you wear your hair I haven't held you close although I want you to know if you don't want me baby I don't care when you're near me it makes the world feel like my playground When you don't hear me, turns my sunshine into rain. You don't appreciate all of the work that it takes to get a nice lady to agree to a date. Should have gave me your number when I asked for it nice. You should have taken your father's well founded advice. You should have seen all this coming a mile away. And now you are inside my van. I had too many, and I'm sorry about my temper you're just really heavy and my head is pounding hard so why don't you stop all that screaming it's not like there's anyone listening if you can't keep it down I brought tape Lie, did he die, did he die, did he die? La die, did he die, did he die, did he die? Lie, did he die, did he die, did he die? My parents' basement is as good a place as any. They really hate it. When I do this so late at night But I have a day job 
I work for some born again art snob. You'd have known that if you'd listened last night. You'd look so pretty in some of that makeup I laid on the table. I know that you're sleepy. But I'm gonna need you to put this dress on And if you could please hold it I'm reliving a moment And when we're through here I will sing you her favorite song and we are back all right that was a weird one. I was in um, I was in Dublin, Ireland for that song challenge song. That's why it sounds all like Irish folk songy. And one of my coworkers had a creepy van. So that's um, that's how that happened. <laughs> all right, and we're back. So I lost in my live producer here the comments thread. I can't see it anymore, and uh, that window has gone berserker on me. So I'm just going to ignore that for now and pile through. I did see before everything went wonky, Lisa was excited about seeing how to composite a photo in Photoshop. So let's do, let's do that, because that's pretty fun. So let's, uh, let's take a little trip over to my desktop here. Dun, 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 dun. Now we're here at my desktop. Cool place to be. I think it's groovy. And let's choose what photos we want. I'm just making this small. Get it out of the way. Let's choose what photos we want to work from, from my Lightroom category, uh, uh, from my Lightroom catalog, even. So let's bust open Lightroom here. And here's the photo that we were working on last week. There are some specific photos that I I did a shoot a while back with um, uh, Robbie McLeod, another photographer in the area, and he was working on a comic novel type um, art project called Dragon's World, which is a Game of Thronesy type photographic novel, and um, and I went and did the shoot with him. So we were taking photos with the intention of compositing them later. So you'll notice that they're all on very clean backgrounds. So we, we meant to do that. Um, so let's look at some of those photos. I haven't really edited many of them yet. Uh, I think those are in... Where is that shoot? Events? Yes. Let's take a look at some of these photos and pick the one we want to work on. I'm just going to make this window bigger so you guys can see. So here we have Cal. Cal was dressed up as some sort of knight here. We were going to do like a big dragon fight. Um, so I have photos of him just swinging haphazardly his sword around and fighting with somebody. So these are cool. We could take these photos and put them on like a uh, dragon type backdrop. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, this is cool. Uh, I'm not sure which one we want to go with. That's kind of cool. I like the mask. Uh, I want to pick a photo that gives us gives us something to work with. Like, what do we want to put in the back of these things? All right, let's keep looking. These are cool. She had a chain tied around his neck, and we were uh, <laughs> yeah, but he's smiling, so that won't work. This one though would work. She's like screaming. Uh, this was, let's take a look at this. This is a pretty cool photo on its own. Her swinging this chain here. So we could take this. I kind of like this one. I'm just going to, I'm going to hit a one on my keyboard on this. And that's going to give it a star so that when I come back and look through these, uh, 
we'll, we'll have less to pick through. Um, I don't want to spend too much time picking an image. This is uh, Maya. She is, was amazing. She's doing all sorts of jump kicks and stuff. Cute little girl. Uh, that could be, this would be a cool image if we brighten it up a little bit and then maybe like put her in a fantasy world. Like I could see her, if we put like a butterfly in her hands here or something, that could be cool. Maybe let's, let's think about that. We'll add a one on that. And we got my hitchhiking with the sword. This is her and her mom. That's Robbie. He put this shoot together. He's the mastermind behind Dragon's World. Uh, and then we have Kate here, and she's like the assassin. Maybe we could put the assassin in something. These are interesting perspectives that we could like put her up against a wall somewhere. Something just like maybe as a bystander in an image. Let's put a one on her. Here's Connor and Kate. I. It's too bad that looks like such a cheesy bow because that could have been a cool shot. Now we have some treachery. We got Connor being himself here. Uh, this could be cool. We could put him up against a dragon maybe. Let's give that one a one. And then he was just... <laughs> Jumping around a lot. Da, 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 Kale is fighting. I like this one because just look at it. She looks so intense. But this is like, this would be, I would envision like a sorcery kind of um, magic like background, like runes behind her or something like that. I'm going to hit one on it because that's a good contender. These are cool. Maya's jumping. Um, maybe we could have her jumping across rooftops or something like that. I'm just scouting right now for ideas that could be cool. I don't know what we're going to end up making yet. I haven't, I haven't decided. It kind of jump kicks. She could be fighting something, maybe. These are really good jump kicks. Like She was impressive. All right, that's it. So let's see which ones we starred. Let's uh, go up to here and I'll just filter them by how many have been starred. We picked, I think that's six. Which one should we work on? Uh, how are we doing for time? All right. Let's work on this one. I think it'll be the easiest to get done in the time that we have. So now we've selected our photo. I'm going to do a couple base adjustments in Lightroom um, real quick. Let's just play with the exposure here a little bit. She's kind of overexposed. Her shadows are pulled up a lot, so I'm pulling those back down. Uh, I'm just trying to even out the light on her in Lightroom because it's just faster than doing it in Photoshop. Once I have the photo where I want it to be, this is good, then I'm going to hit um, Control in E on a Windows PC or Command in E on a Mac, and that will actually take the photo from Lightroom and transfer it directly to Photoshop for you, which is awesome. So you'll see Photoshop's opening now, and there she is in Photoshop now, so we can get rid of Lightroom. Um, now we got Photoshop. And uh, it's weird that my, my tablet's not respecting my preferences, but whatever. The show must go on. So the first thing we want to do here in order to put her on a different background is we're going to need to cut her out of this background. That's what makes Photoshop so amazing because it's just the best tool for this. There's so many tools included. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'll show you some of the quicker ways. You can use the quick selection tool, which is basically a, a, a brush. Um, and you can come in here and adjust the brush size. So again, I'm going to use my Windows Alt key combination with the little button and adjust my brush size. And you can see as I paint her, it might be it might be tough to see on the live stream. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more. But you can see the area of these little marching ants around her. That's the selected area. I hope that it comes in all right. Um, so let me just zoom out, move her around. We'll zoom in over here. And then I'll make my brush smaller. Note, 
all I'm doing to zoom in and out of this picture right now is I'm using a combination of the Windows key and Alt key and the space bar and my pen. So if I hit the space bar and I use my pen, I move around the image. If I hit the Alt key and the space bar and I use my pen, I zoom in the image to the area that I want to go to, right? So these are very helpful for, you know, moving in. Let's see if we can select, you know, her shoe better. Now I can come in here and I can use the quick select tool and tell these marching arrows are around her shoe, right? We want this to be a decent selection, All right? So I'm just going around her. I'm using my space bar and my pen and I'm moving around and I'm kind of painting what I want selected in this image. And the reason I'm selecting her is because we want to cut her out of this white background that she's on so that we can put her on a different background. It doesn't do any good to put her into a new image if the background behind her is all a solid white color. It's, unless it was a solid white image we were putting her in. In which case, why would we be doing this at all? All right. So I'm going to zoom out now so we see all of her. And hopefully you can see that there's a reasonably okay selection of her that I've painted on with this quick selection brush. It, I, I did an okay job, all right? So if we cut her out now, you can see the bits around that uh, were left behind. And just for an example, I wanna show you what this would look like if we make a new image here, uh, create a new image and then paste it. Uh, let me make that background a different color so it pops out more. So I'm going to make the background here a different color so you can see how poor this selection really is. Look at all the white like up in her hair and stuff. Like This would not be a good selection. Right? There's too much of the background still in it. It looks, it looks crappy. It looks photoshopped. Right? We don't want that. So I'm going to come back to our image here that has uh, these little marching dots on it. And I'm gonna go back to my quick selection tool here. And I wanna show you a few things that make this easier and better. Okay, so in these newer versions of Photoshop, there's a new button that they've introduced. So if I hit the W key, the W key for the, the selection wand, um, I get these two buttons up here in Photoshop. One of them says select subject. If I click select subject, it says it's gonna discard what I've already got selected because you can only have one thing selected at a time. That's fine. It's gonna use Photoshop's native AI to try and define what the selection I want it to be is, right? So I didn't even have to paint this. It made the selection for me just based on the information that it could read. So let's look at what that selection looks like against our black backdrop. So I'm gonna just cut this guy out and I'm gonna come over here and then Let's get rid of her from here. And then it's kind of a backwards way to do it. Fill in the background with black. You can see the selection really isn't much better. Right? We still have all these white areas and all this jaggedness and it looks really bad. So let's get rid of that. Let's go back to here. Now, see, I still got my selection. I just used the um, the select subject kind of auto tool here to select what is currently selected. Now there's another button next to select subject called select and mask. And this tool is helpful for refining these selections. So you'll notice that when I hit that tool, it brought me to this new panel where I have my black backdrop and you can just see the bits that are messed up, right? And there's some brushes over here. One of those brushes is called the Refine Edge Brush. And that is a brush that just tells Photoshop, you're saying, hey, hey Photoshop, you did a pretty good job figuring out that selection, but uh, around these edges, I need you to take a closer look because it doesn't look right. Um, so the Refine Edge Brush is like, it tells Photoshop to go over these areas that I'm about to brush and take a second look to try and define what is the backdrop and what is the foreground. So check it out. I'm just going to paint with this Refine Edge brush around these areas. And you'll see that the white areas start to mat out into the background. Photoshop's smart. Well, we're helping it out, actually. We're telling it, look, there's, there's a problem here. I need you to reassess this. And now I'm going to use the space bar on my keyboard and my pen here 
to move around the image, right? Wherever these edges are weird, I'm gonna make my brush smaller by holding my Windows key and Alt and then uh, moving my hand from right to left to make to adjust my brush size, right? So I got a nice smallish brush and I'm just painting over these jagged edges of her. And I'm gonna keep moving my way. Actually, that looks worse, I'm gonna undo that one. I'm gonna keep moving my way. See here, there's a bunch of white. Let's make this a bigger brush. We're just helping Photoshop define what is what should be selected and what should not be selected. That's all. And it's and it does a pretty good job. Um, now, the better your selection is, the more time you take getting this right, the better your image is going to be. Right? I'll look at all this frilliness. Uh, I'll look how jagged her, her um, clothes are. So I'm just going to paint with the refine edge, and it's going to kind of try and blend it in. It's not doing a great job at all. It's, it's program dependent. And what I mean by program dependent means the effectiveness of these tools um, is dependent on the image you're working on. Some images take different tools better than others. That's why Photoshop is sometimes referred to as a Swiss army knife of tools because I mean, there's a bunch of different things you might need for different images. There's a bunch of different ways to do the thing you need to do, right? And all of them have pros and cons. You just have to know what's available and then how to manipulate it, right? And you do that by just watching, learning, reading, playing, and trying to do projects. Like, it, we have a project right now. Our project is we're going to try and put this girl on a new background. So... In order to do that well, these are skills we need to learn. Right? Come up with a project for yourself. Come up with a you know have a goal, have an end result in mind, and then figure out or you know um, research what tools or what things you need to do to make that vision actually happen. Nothing's really that hard. Everything's just overwhelming when it's new. Though, at this point, Photoshop is not new, and I, I'm really just starting to use it this year. Photoshop's one of the oldest programs that's still around. Um, um, so people have been doing this for whole careers, and they've gotten very, very, very good at it. This is thinking right now. I'm just waiting for it to think. And then we'll zoom out and take a look. Hopefully it doesn't crash on me. That'd be, that'd be rough. That'd be a, uh, oh, I painted a stroke. I didn't mean to. I'm just going to undo that. Those last couple of strokes there. I was painting when I didn't want to. All right. So I'm just finishing up around her hair here. There's some weird spots. And I think that's pretty good. Mm. All right, so let's zoom out. Much better, much better. So this isn't perfect, but it definitely, I would rather have this kind of watercolory wash, I think, especially for this magic type of photo I'm going for. Actually, I got to fix her arm up here because this jaggedness is too much. That makes me sick. Makes me sick. This brush is doing a not very good job, right? See how it's kind of just blurring me out here? There's other uh, brushes here that can help you refine this even more. This one's just a regular brush tool. So I'm going to go in here and, um, and I'm going to hold the Alt key. All right, so this is how br brushes in Photoshop generally work. So if I just brush, I'm going to apply paint. But if I hold the Alt key, the Alt key is often a modifier. In this case, instead of adding to our selection, it will subtract. So 
Let me make this brush a little bigger so you can see what the cursor's doing. It's, it's very small, but in the center of this cursor, there's a little plus, I think, or it's a little crosshairs type thing. If I hit the Alt key, I can barely see it. Yeah, see the crosshair on her face? Now if I hit the Alt key, it turns into a little minus. I'm just doing that with my keyboard. All right, so I'm gonna make this brush. Whoop, I made a snake there. I'm just gonna make this brush smaller. I'm gonna hit the Alt key to subtract. And I'm just gonna clean up some of these spots around here I didn't want it to get. And it actually did a pretty good job. It just took a little, ooh, and cut into her too much. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control Z to get rid of that. Ah, ah. And then I'll go back to my Refine Edge brush here. Ooh. I'm on the wrong brush. The Refine Edge brush here, which would actually, I think, be R on your keyboard. I should have just hit the R key. And then that will help me out there. All right, cool. So this is looking better. Now, there's some other tools over here that you can play with to further uh, optimize this image. Like right now, we are looking at our view on black. We could change some of these overlays to see what it looks like up against a red over overlay, which is helpful because I can see that she's kind of translucent here in the neck area. That doesn't make much sense. So let's go to that brush tool again and hit the minus key and let's subtract that from her because that sh she should definitely be fully selected, right? We don't want any red on her body. That'd be bad. That would mean that she'd be kind of not part of the not part of the selection. Okay, cool. Now, there's some other things. We can adjust the radius and uh, edge detection. We can smooth out this selection a little bit or feather it, w whatever which way. You can adjust these sliders the way you want. I don't usually mess with them much. I would just output this to a selection, right? So, boom. Now you can see I've got my marching ants, but if we zoom in here, you'll see like around her, um, I don't know, like, uh, these little spots where she's got her arms are not selected. It was smart enough to see that this is transparent here. It should see through that. So this is a much better selection than we were getting with those quick wands or these auto tools, right? We just had to go in and clean it up a little bit. Now, if I cut this out, right, and go over to our other, uh, our other thing here, let me fill this with black, and then paste her, our selection is much, much better. Now this looks like, um, I mean, this is still a little wonky over here, but we can cover all this stuff up in the composite, right? All that matters is now we have our cutout of Maya looking cool. The next step in our composite is to find what image we want to put her on. So we're going to open up a browser here, and I'm going to go to Deposit Photos. Deposit Photos is a stock photos image site that I pay a subscription to to be able to use the photos and the stuff that I make. I think it costs... 30 bucks a month or something like that. I don't remember if I got it on Black Friday or something like that, but it's a monthly subscription that I pay because I make a lot of stuff and I need a lot of stock photos. So since we got that, let's use it and let's look for fantasy world. Let's see what, see what we can do. So let's keep her over here for our reference. This is driving me nuts. These buttons are still on, even though I turned them off. Ah. All right, so we've got, this is what we're putting. We could put her at the end of this mysterious magic portal, like standing right there, all pissed off. That could be cool looking. We could, uh, we could put her here in this weird fantasy planet. Like she'd been teleported there by a wizard that was mad because she was going to save the world from his evil and wretched plan. We could put her here in electric blue alien world, which could be fun. I like electric blue alien worlds. Um, but all these look more fun. She looks pissed. I'm looking for something that kind of can be, this is kind of cool. I think I want to put her in this at the end of time. Hoo wee. That's deep. This is what we're going with. I like it. So 
I'm going to download this image. Um, I can because I pay them. If you want to download images from them, you have to pay them. There are some sites where you can get free images. Pexels is one of them. And also Pixabay is one of them. There's a lot of free stock images there that you can use without attribution or anything. Um, and not that I don't want to attribute people for their work, but a lot of the, um, the licensing that requires attribution is just, it looks bad in, um, in the stuff I'm making. I don't want to have a bunch of call outs for every little piece of, um, every asset that I use, you know? Okay. Let's get back to, uh, let's get back to it. So let's grab this. I'm going to show it in the folder here and here's my photo where it downloaded to. Let's just drag this into Photoshop. Sweet. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. I was just looking for a fantasy world and I found this really trippy, cool image that I wish I made myself. Okay. So we've got our background. Let's make a new layer on top of our background. We know how layers work now, right? We've got a new layer. This isn't a painting. This is a photo. So it still works the same way. So now I'm going to hit Command and V to paste our picture of, of Maya. All right. This is cool, but she is way too big for the scene. That's the first thing I noticed right away. There's a couple things. She's way too bright and she's way too big. So let's take care of the big first. In Photoshop, this is easy. We use the transform tool. The transform tool, you can get to it by using control or command T, depending on if you're using a PC or Mac. So I'm going to hit control T right now because I am on a PC. And now you'll see I get all these points around that image that I pasted or this layer that is pasted. And I can take any of these and start to transform her. And let's just make her smaller so that she makes more sense in this image. And I don't want her to cover up the clock because the clock is cool. She knows the end of time is coming, right? She is prepared. She's been telling everybody all this time to prepare and they haven't. And this is her wrath. This is where I want her and that's about the size that I want her to be. And already that looks pretty cool. But we're going to have to do some things to get her to blend in. First, I'm going to make a new, you guessed it, new layer. First, I'm going to actually rename this layer so I don't lose it. I'm going to call it Maya. Then I'm going to take this new layer and I'm going to hit Control and L. Control and L. Ooh, it won't let me do it. I'm gonna actually, this is what's happened here. I tried to make a new blank layer and then I tried to do an adjustment on that blank layer. You obviously can't adjust something that doesn't exist. So instead of making a blank layer and putting my adjustment on that, I'm going to make a copy of this Maya here, and I'm going to put an adjustment on that. So here's my copy. I'm going to make that one invisible. I just want to save it in case I ever want to go back to this original image. I just want it to be protected. I'm going to hit Command and L. And now it's brought up my levels dialog. And the levels dialog gives us a histogram. This histogram is a representation of all the lights and darks in the images. So this is showing us that most of the information in this picture, this layer of Maya, is in the bright end of the spectrum. It's towards the highlights. Now, I don't want that to be, so I'm going to take this slider and I'm going to pull some of that down. And then I'm going to pull some of these blacks down which makes them a little darker. And then I actually want the mids maybe to come up a little bit. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to blend, I'm trying to blend the, the tone of her with the image that we're going into. So look, this is where we were before. And now with those levels adjustment, she blends in a lot more. We darkened her up to fit the background. Now, it kind of works. The red in her kind of works. Um, not so much. We might want to go in here and smudge some of this or, or uh, maybe add some fog or mist or something to cover up some of the imperfections in this because a, a lot of compositing is covering, covering things up. 
you're cutting something out and then you're pasting it into another thing and then you're putting a layer of whatever on top of it to make to hide all the spots where you stitched um so uh i think i think she's still a little too big so i'm gonna select her and i'm gonna hit command t and i'm gonna size her down a little bit more and then yeah i think that's better she does look angry all right, what do we want to do next? Let's see, should we put something else in the image, like a car or... Uh, I want to put magic behind her. Let's try it, let's see if we can put, let's see if we can paint some kind of like magic cloud. So I'm gonna hide this layer too and make a new layer. And I'm gonna hide all the layers except for this new layer. Then let's grab our brush tool and let's play with some of these brushes and see if we can get like a, let's try this concept brush. This looks all puffy and cloudy. And let's give it a, like a purplish kind of situation. Does this not let me paint on here? What's your, what's your problem, man? What's the dilly yo? Uh, my, my. I don't want it to be better. I wanted it to be like clouds, but the clouds doesn't seem to work with this color. I don't know why. These brushes kind of suck. In comparison, I don't. I want Photoshop to be better than Procreate because Photoshop's just so reputable. But I mean. For this right now. I would be getting better results faster in Procreate. That's just the truth. And that's sad, Adobe. So you should listen to me. Let's see if we got a better brush in these Flurn brushes. Flurn is a site, a uh, membership site that I subscribe to that teaches Photoshop tutorials and stuff about photography and whatnot. And these are some of the assets that I've got from them as part of their tutorials and stuff. And some of them are good. Um, so we have some art brushes, retouching brushes, textures. I think there's clouds and stuff in here. Atmosphere. So let's grab Learn Clouds. All right, here we go. This is kind of what I was looking for. Let's pick a cooler color. By cooler, I mean different, <laughs> not necessarily bluer. And I'm just kind of making a swirly with this, and then I'll make a brighter purple, and I'll put some of that in there, and then even like a pink. And I'll put some of that in there, and then I'll put in some red. And make it a little wider. Why am I doing this? That's an excellent question. You'll notice that while we're painting on this layer, see the checkered background there? The checkered background means that there, there is no filled color on the background. It's transparent. There's nothing behind this. It's just a floating blob of color. So now we can add this floating blob of color. Like imagine it was just one, like a, um, a laminate thing that a teacher's putting over the overhead projector and we're applying it to our composite image. So let me turn these other layers back on. And then I'm gonna take this layer and let's put it behind my, and let's hide, let's hide that second one. And then I'm gonna take my move tool and I'm gonna move it behind her All right and then now we've got this little cloud of whatever behind her I'm gonna just over here in the layer properties I'm going to use the blend modes to just cycle through and see what they do to the image each one of these blend modes is taking the two layers the blob of color that we made and this um, and this uh, picture of Maya and the background and it's doing different logic to blend them together in different ways like some of these only let the dark colors through some of them only let the light colors through some of them switch the colors and then let them through in a different way like there's 27 of them or something ridiculous some of them you use frequently like uh, screen and 
um, overlay are often used a lot. I use them a lot. Um, but most often I just open up the, this, uh, where it says normal, this layers dialog and cycle through them and see what, what they do, see what the effect has. Cause it can be very, very dramatic and it can do really cool things that you wouldn't have thought of. Like I, I like the way it's making everything behind her like redder right now. I like it better than the cloudiness. It's got, it's taken away the puffiness and just left the color information, which is cool, right? There's no detail in this layer in overlay right now. And it's just it's just showing the color and I like what that's doing so cool so we put some red over her let's make another let's make a copy of this layer actually so I'm going to grab that layer and then drag it and then I'm going to put that on top of her and then I'm going to hit command T and I'm going to transform that and change our cloud of color the size of it right I'm going to rotate it a little bit put this over here I know it's purple and that looks stupid, but that's all right. I'm just making her blend in, right? And then we will take a look at uh, what we can do here. I, I don't know that that's making her blend in in the way I thought it would. <laughs> it's making her blend out. And then we abandon what we were trying to do right there because it's not working. And we go back to our clouds brush and we'll just paint in some more color. I want it to be closer to the white end though. I want it to be more, yeah, more cloudy and like soft like that. And it's important that I'm also, I'm painting above and behind her because that's how, uh, how it would really work. If it was just in front of her, it would look silly. And I'm putting some way back here in the background just so, so it's not just sudden fog out of nowhere, though it is too heavy. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring the opacity of this whole layer down and just mellow out the whole effect. Right? Now she's coming up from the steaming bubbling ground. She's pissed, but the color on her and the smoke doesn't really match the background. That's bothersome to me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, this is just an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm going to create a new layer. Actually, I'm going to create a solid color layer. So instead of hitting that little new layer thing, I hit this little adjustment um, tool. And that brings up a few different things that you might use all the time, like curves and levels and setting your exposure and stuff. Um, I'm going to set a, a new solid color layer and it creates a new layer for me and gets me ready to pick what color I want for it. And I want this to be actually, I'm going to go back to our image and I'm going to use the color picker by holding the alt key. Like I told you the alt key is often a modifier for things. If you're in the brush tool and you hold the alt key, it gives you a color picker similar to the one that we used in procreate. So I'm going to pick a color that's naturally occurring somewhere near her in the image like one of like this color this is something that would be reflecting off of her right if she was really in this image so i'm going to use that color and uh let's go and make that fill layer and see if it'll let me just use the color i had selected it does so we're making this kind of brown fill layer and next i'm gonna i'm gonna do what's called clipping um i'm going to make this fill layer apply only to the layer below it. And I guess that was kind of redundant. I guess there's no reason to do this here. There we go. So what I did was hold the alt key on my keyboard. And then I clicked over here on the line between these two layers. And what that does is you'll see over in the corner. Now there's a little arrow key next to my color fill um layer here that's saying this filled color is applying only to what is in this layer beneath it so if we hide the other layers we're saying i only want that to apply to the places we've painted on the layer beneath me that's pretty sick All right now i'll show you why it's cool so let's turn on the background again and this 
And then um, let's take our color fill and let's just turn that opacity way down and see what it's doing. I'm just adding some of the color from the image into her. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with the blend modes. And I like this hard light one. I think that one is what I want. Now, this is a lot better than if we look at the original Maya, um, which we've kept over here. Let's see what she looked like. Right now, she's got some of the same color tones. It's not perfect. There's a lot more purple in what I've done here than was in the original image, but that was kind of, I was going for that. I wanted like a purpley magic kind of um, smoke around her. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's just how to work with text in Photoshop. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. That was just me hitting things. So I'm going to make a new layer here. And on this new layer, I'm going to put some text. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard for the text tool. And it brings up a little cursor here. And then I'm just going to kind of drag out an area that I want to type in. And it gives me a, a lorem ipsum, which is helpful. It can help you, you know, lay out text. If you were going to like lay out a magazine or something like that, you can set it to where you wanted the text to be, which can be helpful. I'm going to set the color to white. It already is it's selected, so we should see that pretty well. And then I'm going to use my move tool, which is V on the keyboard or just the top tool here um, to move that into place. That looks cool. Um, but let's see what we can do to it. Now, this has made when I added the text with the text tool, you'll see over in the layers, it made me a new layer with a T on it of the type text. It's a text layer. If I double click on this layer, I get more options about the layer, which are interesting. So this brings up the layer style dialog. So if you look over here, I just put this text up here. It made me a new layer, the lorem ipsum. And then inside that, here's all the options for that layer. This is where you can do cool things with text. Like let's give it a drop shadow. So I come in here and I'll just click drop shadow and see what it does to the image. It kind of, it gives it some depth. It gives a shadow behind it. And there's some some tools here. You can play with it. You can mess with the distance and the, the spread of it and whatnot. This is how I made the cool um, fire text effect on the um, on some of the ads that I was doing for the for the show yesterday. I used these tools in here to make um, to make the text look like it was fire. So all of these different uh, glows and shadows and stuff I set to different tones of red and orange like would be fire so that the the text itself kind of had that vibe um so let's just kind of i'm just adding some glows and playing and just clicking things on really let's see what a bevel does to this not not much let's see what happens if we ooh, that's blend if not bevel let's see what happens if we give it a bunch of depth it does bevel it in kind of a cool way i like it um Cool, so here's our text. We could put it wherever we want. Let's see what happens if we just mess with the blend modes on the text. Let's see what that does to the image. This is what I do a lot when I'm working on flyers. So if I'm trying to, like, I'll take the model's name in an image and put it on, like, the side of a wall or something. And to make that look natural and like it's part of the wall and not just text on top of a picture of a wall, I use these blend modes. And uh, they just help the text blend into its surroundings in a in a better way, like in a more natural way. So this is how you make a composite photo. And you can get as detailed as you want. If we want, um, we could take this photo then and send it to Procreate. And then we can start painting elements on it. Or we could just start painting elements on it in Photoshop if we want. We could just make a new layer here and then use a brush tool and then grab let's see let's make it let's make it rain let's find uh, some rain real quick in here i know i have a rain brush so i'll just grab a la a medium rain brush and i'll make the rain white and then i'm just painting just brushing the rain over her and then i'm going to take another layer 
I'm gonna make a new layer, and then I'm gonna move this. I'm just gonna hold onto it and drag it behind her because I want the paint to come behind her too. It looks more natural. I'm also gonna change the size. See, there's three different ones here for rain. There's small, medium, and large. I'm gonna just add a little of each, right, to make it look a little bit more natural. And the white might be a little bit much for the rain. That maybe should be like blood. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably where I'd go with it. And, uh, that's pretty much how you do it. Um, it's really fun. It's really powerful. And there's a lot. There's a lot more ways to make a selection, really. I think if I could give you any advice for Photoshop, it would be to spend some time and learn how to make really good selections and then you can do compositing with anything and you know blend whatever you want with whatever you want. It's pretty cool. Thank you very much for spending another Saturday morning with me. I had fun uh, doing this. I hope you did too. I hope you learned something. Um, I learned a couple things. I forgot them already, but I'll learn them again next time. That's how <laughs> it works. And I, I, I thank you. I hope you all have a safe quarantine time and um, I'll see you around after it's all over. Stay safe and um, catch you some other time. Bye-bye.